Surround yourself with great people, no matter what you do in life. Surround yourself with people who lift you up and who you can lift up. Don't only expect them to do for you. It's, it's, a, it's a quid pro quo, right? We want to help each other. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for being here, for tuning in, and for sharing all of the stories of our guests who come on the show, and they're helping you to feel your passion, power up your own voice, and they're also so generous with their advice. Well, today's show is no different. Let's get right to it. Today's topic is left brain, right brain, and which side of the brain are you using? Is it the creative side or the logical side, or maybe it's a perfect combination of both? Well, that leads to my special guest. Joining me on the show is Gina Rubel. And Gina is the founder of Furia Rubel, which is an award-winning marketing and PR agency. Gina's really well-known among the corporate and law leaders because they call on her for high stakes PR, crisis planning, and media relations. And Gina is also a media expert and a sought after speaker. So I could go on and on with accolades about Gina, but I think it's best she joins the conversation and shares her advice with you. Gina, welcome to the show. Hello, Deirdre, it's great to be here. Well, thank you, it is great having you. So I just lined it up, you know, I, I didn't mention that you're actually a lawyer who has transitioned to entrepreneur, agency owner. So maybe you could just share briefly, how does one go from law to entrepreneur and agency owner? It's an interesting, a lot of people ask me that question and it's a simple answer. In the practice of law, you communicate a message to a target audience to elicit a response but typically it's in the court of law. In communications, you're doing it in the court of public opinion. And so I do the same thing that I did when I practiced law, but in, a different, in different mediums. And um, really we're looking to elicit a response to a particular message. Interesting. Well, it, it, you know, when you step back and look at it, you think, oh my gosh, how do you translate those skills over? Is it very different? What do you take with you? Was that a, was it an easy transition? It's interesting you would ask that. I started out in PR. Uh, I was fortunate to go to Drexel University in Philadelphia where we did co-ops. I had three six month co-ops in PR. Um, I worked in a number of areas and even in law school, I worked in PR. So when I came back into the agency space, several years after litigating, the concept was easy, but what I did not, what was really difficult was understanding how to run a business. And they don't teach you that in law school and no. you think you learn it in college, but you really don't. And so there were a lot of challenges. It was the communication came naturally to me. I'm very fortunate that way, but the running of a business and management and uh, working with employees and and client management, all of those things that come along with running an agency, I really had to learn. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of learn as you go. I did get my MBA, which helped me a lot to understand how the business ran because I took all, my undergraduate work was in public relations. I got my degree in communications, but you know, running a business is a whole different Ball game. What do you think were the traits that carried over that actually helped you in business? Understanding how to identify a target audience and, and understanding how to communicate with them. One of the things I tell, and we have about 60% of our clients are law firms, big firms throughout the United States and in several other countries. And what I'll usually say to lawyers who were very, when you talk about left brain, right brain, <laughs> very logical, very linear thinkers yes. oftentimes not the litigators, litigators are very creative, but I'll say it's like picking a jury and understanding what, what kind of jury is gonna help you win a case. What 
the type of jurors are going to be biased and how you're going to present those messages so that they hear them in a way that they'll be empathetic. So that the, uh, the litigation is what translated more than the traditional practice of law. That's really interesting. I like the way that you frame that with the, the jury and selecting the jury. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really think about the litigator being creative. Oh, so yeah. do you, do you see yourself as, I mean, were you a litigator first off and were you creative? And is that creativity the same type of creativity that carries out now? I think when we define, part of what we need to do is define creativity. I am oh, a that's good. thinker. Um, I can see, I can visualize ideas and see big pictures and I can see how something may play out in the world. I if it's a visual creative, like something that a graphic designer would do, I am not at all talented in that respect. I can see an idea and then I work with the right team members to help it come to fruition. So creativity for me, and to answer your question with litigators, comes really in terms of the way you think about ideas and issues and how to solve problems, think about puzzles, and how to present them in a way that are effective that people will understand and hear. Um, I am very creative that way. I love that definition. No, absolutely. And to be able to take your creative vision and share that in such a way that somebody like a designer can actually then build it and make it come to life. You know, when you have that, those two parts going, that's ultimate creativity. Uh, what would you say, um, I mean, I, I guess, is there anything that, um, any moments of aha or uh-oh on your journey that sort of stuck with you or made you into the um, agency owner that you are today? Uh, so many. I'm, I'm thinking about which ones to pick. <laughs> and, you know, number one, um, this is about women worldwide. And as a woman litigator in the early 90s, I started out, my first litigation job was in a law firm of all men. I was the only woman lawyer there. Oh my gosh. And that was an aha moment in and of itself. Understanding, I'm an only child too, so I'm, I'm pretty resilient. I'm pretty uh, independent. I, I, and yet I never felt more alone in my life. Um, Truthfully, I was depressed. Mm, that's hard. When the men were going out to a men's lunch, I was sitting eating a salad at my desk working. And then the women, they were lovely, but the women who worked there were, at the time we used the term secretary, now we say administrators. Um, but they saw themselves as thinking that I thought that I was more, I was better than them because I had a law degree. You know, the women were very tough on you too. And it was, it was an unhealthy, toxic environment for women. And yet I'm still friends with many of the lawyers who I worked with. They were great people. I, I don't think they understood the challenges of me being the only woman there. Sure. And, um, you know, and I learned a lot. So that was a big aha moment for me was I didn't ever want to be the only woman. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I rely on the incredible women uh, like you in my network and Thank our dear you. friend, Susan Freeman. Oh and gosh, yes. There's just so many women who have lifted me up. Patrice Tanaka, right? Oh so, gosh, Patrice, she's been on the show too. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and Susan. So it's important, that aha moment and what I share with the listeners is surround yourself with great people no matter what you do in life. Surround yourself with people who lift you up and who you can lift up. Don't only expect them to do for you. It's, it's, a, it's a quid pro quo, right? We want to help each other. Absolutely. I mean, I think that the, the best relationships, the, the tribes that form, it's all about the lifting and, you know, you're, you're sharing and, and helping. And I always wonder, I mean, you said that you felt so alone and there were other women around Sometimes today you still see that in a work environment. I don't know if you see this in with the law firms that you work with, but women sometimes are still not helping and lifting. 
one another. And that's really tough. We have to, we have to begin to realize that you, you know, stop with the competition that we're better off being together and, and stronger. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I've seen it in so many places. Uh, I'm fortunate to have, we're a team of all women, women owned uh, agency and I can tell, and that's not by design. It's the way it's worked out over the years. Yeah, it's just happened. It's just happened. But I can tell you there is not a soul on this team that doesn't lift the next woman up. And Great. we would never tolerate toxicity. Mm -hmm. uh, we would find, we would find uh, coaching if we had to, but toxicity helps no one, especially the person being toxic. It's not helping you either. <laughs> exactly. Now, what happens if a man came to your firm, being that you remember being the only woman with a bunch of men, how do you think you would look at the one lone male <laughs> if he was it on your team? It's hard. We've had men on the team and it's been hard for them here. And, and I've tried so many different ways. I think if we hired, it would be two at the same time. Yeah. Oh, what? that's a good idea. Um, because, you know, just like in any diversity initiative, um, people want to see other people like them and they want to be able to connect, whether they're millennials or, or Gen Zs or seniors or someone with a disability or uh, someone who's black or brown. It's really important to try to create balance. Yeah. And I have failed in that regard here when it comes to having men on the team. Although we have a ton of men who consult with us from a 1099. And um, they're brilliant. So it's not a matter sure. of man or woman. It was much harder, however, before the pandemic. Yeah. Because we were all in an open space office. Exactly. And, and frankly, when if, if one woman is having um, a, a lunar cycle, it, <laughs> it changes the dynamic. It changes. <laughs> That's hysterical. Let's talk a little bit more about your, your team. Being that you you are balanced, um, whether you believe in right brain, left brain, or this perfect blend of creative and logical, do you tend to have team members who are more like you, or are they um, have strengths that complement you? I would say every one of our team members are smarter than me in some way, shape, or form. Nice. I really well, I always say that with the smartest really people around you. Uh, uh, just a, a example, our chief innovation officer, she comes from 17 years of running an agency on the digital side. She speaks digital speak, which blows me out of the water. Uh, within two months, she had our CRM on HubSpot in place. I couldn't do it myself if I tried. Is she a millennial? <laughs> no, she is not. However, uh, then I have uh, several millennials on the team who are so well versed in political science and political issues. And when we have clients that, again, a lot of law firms, a lot of municipalities, um, a lot of organizations that need to work with compliance like banking. Yeah. The, she understands everything that has to do with the political landscape. And then I have another member who's same age as me, who is worked in the media for 15 years brilliant writer, brilliant analyst. And so everyone brings something to the team. Uh, you know, even my office manager, who's a, a little bit older than me, she brings a perspective that is very balancing to the whole team. And so we, we're just blessed. That we're blessed. sounds like a great group and a, a, a skill set that complements, which is so important in your client's benefit. So with everything that's going on um, and you do work with law firms and corporate leaders and there's so much out there in the news and it can be stressful, which means it could be stressful during your day too, right? There's demands, I know this. How are you maintaining that calm <laughs> that we're gonna get this done and everything's gonna work out very well? Well, I would say for the first 17 years of business, I faked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is it's, it's very difficult. Um, and I would say that it's really come in relying on the team members, setting boundaries. I say no a lot. 
Yeah. I always did. Um, because I just, I, I always prioritize. No to clients or no to folks who are working on your campaigns? Uh, neither. More no to extracurricular activities or, or things that are not priority that would interfere with family time. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I don't work weekends anymore. I've stopped that. I, I really have stopped that. I'll check email. All my clients have my cell phone. If it's a crisis, they can mm -hmm. reach me at any time. But I've stopped checking email. Uh, I'm not on social media much on weekends anymore. Um, I hired people who could take over. I have three people right now doing the job that I was doing 18 months ago by myself. Oh, my. Three and people. Three of us full time. Holy and God. so I realized that there were some things that I just weren't, wasn't doing. Uh, I, I was doing the best I could under the circumstances. And I'm good with accepting that, you know, uh, enough about me to know, I love the book, the four agreements. Sure. So, oh yes. I love so, that book. I recommend it to all women worldwide yes, <laughs> listeners and people watching. So I accepted what I could only do where I can only do my best, but now it's time 18 years into my business for me to do better for myself. Let's talk about that because share with women worldwide with, with the network, what you've gained by, you know, even what you said, hiring three people to do what you were doing, um, not being on social media. I think there is this, it's FOMO, fear of missing out, yeah. but you gained so much. I've cut back on my weekends on social media as well. So share, share the benefit. Well, for me, I've, I have a Peloton and I used to be on social media a little bit too much in the morning before work. And I'm making sure that I'm on that bike at least 20 to 45 minutes in the morning. Oh, if I was yeah. on social media, then I'm on the bike. Uh, I'm, we, ha we live close to a beach, even in the winter, it's cold, it's in New Jersey, but I'll go for a walk in the morning on the beach, which I didn't used to do. I had to do that email. I had to get this done. I have to do that. You know, so I, I always cut I, into your time. It cut into my time in such a way that it was invasive. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm taking back that time. Good. I'm taking back that time because other people are taking things off my plate. And when you hire well and you hire smart, you need to trust. I, I do believe, and I think my team would agree that I'm not a micromanager. Right. In fact, oftentimes I just say, don't, I don't, don't even tell me the details, just make a decision and run with it. And that can make people uncomfortable too, because they want to run it by me. Um, do, you know, do you think that the walks on the beach, the Peloton, not jumping on social media over the weekend, do you think that helps to clear your mind so that you can actually be more creative? I do. In fact, I've started meditating, uh, which it's very hard for me to do. It's hard for me to quiet my mind. Mm -hmm. And so even for five minutes, if you want to talk challenges, that's really hard. Um, so for anybody who can meditate for 30 minutes to an hour quietly, God bless you. <laughs> I, I'm working on it. I'm working no, on keep, it. No, keep working on it. It took me a really long time. I did just five. I started with three minutes and then it was like five minutes forever. And then all of a sudden it started to work and then it was 10 minutes and then 20 minutes was nothing. And then I got lost in 45 minutes and good for you. Thank you. And that's, I just, I started in the last couple of months, I would say as a Christ doing a lot of crisis communications coming off of the pandemic Oh boy. and um, a, a contentious election year, it yes. really did take a lot out of me. And so I'm taking my soul back. Oh, good. Um, that's what I'm doing. And I'm meditating. I have a gratitude journal and I'm what is a gratitude journal? A, a gratitude journal is just, it doesn't have to, I'm not a formal writer. In other words, I don't need to write paragraph after paragraph after paragraph and feel fulfilled. So what I'm doing is writing three things I'm grateful for each day. And, and, and it might be just a word so that I don't, I, I don't want to create something where I feel like I have to do something. <laughs> right. Is this every morning you write in your gratitude journal or it could be any time of the day you just jot something down? Any time of the day, I just jot it down. Um, I keep right. it in my room. So sometimes I'll write it on a note, a piece, of, a, a notepad card and put it in my purse to remember to just put it there. You know, I'm grateful for our relationship. 
I am too. Um, I'm grateful for what I've learned from you and your network and our network. And, and those are the types of things where gratitude lifts you up mm -hmm. and it, it changes, you know, if you want to get, a, a lot of people don't understand what, when I say vibration, that oh, the energy, the energy, the the energy higher vibration, universe, right? It's the same thing. You're putting out energy, right? Like you're not, um, my grandfather from Italy, who was, he taught himself to read and write English. He was an immigrant. He always said he believed in the idea of energy. It's not created or destroyed. It's positive or negative. You choose which one you want to be. It's That's your choice. Great. And, and I've, I've lived that. And so I try to raise my vibration as you will, by being mindful of gratitude. And by thanking my team members, by thanking my friends. Um, another thing I'm doing is texting my friends a little bit more just to say, just a note to tell you I'm thinking of you. That's good. I, I've Hold realized how busy we get. Oh yeah, there's always something to do. And, and, and there's always, I mean, I like to see the positive myself. Yeah. So gratitude, the energy you put out is what you get back. And well, that's and vibration. I, I know you didn't ask me to be on the show for this reason, but anybody can learn gratitude from you by reading your books and by oh, thank being you. mindful of, you know, your life experience is so prophetic and has so much gift in it. And, and think, I mean, you've been through tragedy. I've experienced tragedy in this world. And if we don't find the good in the world, we're just going to bury ourselves. And, and to all the women and men listening, just write down one thing you're grateful for each day, wow. whether it's at work or at home or, or anywhere. It helps. It really does, especially in a pandemic. <laughs> Taz, well, thank, thank you so much for what you said. And I agree, even if it's just one thing I do, um, when I wake up, the first thing I do is what I'm grateful for. And I find myself being very, very grateful, even before I get out of bed. And that just directs my entire day. But I don't write it in a journal. I, I like that you put it on paper. I think that that really sends a message to the universe. Well, in the morning, the first thing I do is I, 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 I literally do this religiously. I wake up and I say, thank you, Lord, I'm awake today. Um, and, and, I, and every day for the 21 years that my children have been on this earth, I thank the Lord that my children are still here. And that's always been the case. And I'm, I'm close to tears because I know what you've been through in your life. I've lost a, <laughs> a lot of very hearing up in a second. <laughs> I know, right? I've lost a lot of close people at a very young age. Um, I thank God every day that my children are still here, and I am so grateful for that. And and that's the kind of thing where you set that that, that you wake up going, okay, today's I'm here, right? I'm here. I'm breathing. It's the most beautiful thing possible. <laughs> and if you haven't learned anything from the year that shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that that, that past year? <laughs> that past year, yes. Um, yes. It, it, Did it, you see the match commercial, the match commercial with the devil? <laughs> on somebody match. else mentioned Commons. that to me. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, go, go Google it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I will. I will. Oh, Gina, we, we could talk for hours. We're actually nearing the end of our discussion. I would love for you just to give some parting advice to the Women Worldwide Network. Do what you love and love what you do. Uh, I love what I do, which makes me have the ability to be creative. Um, and if you're not loving it, find a way to do it differently or find something else that you do love even if it's coloring books. Uh, and that sounds silly, but I'm not talking about crayons and kids stuff. I'm talking about like adult Dover coloring books where you're doing beautiful bird scenes or just things that bring you peace. Um, invest in yourself. And, um, and I'm gonna say this to myself, I'm saying this to Gina, Gina self, <laughs> stop making excuses. Um, you know, I'm, I'm good at the excuses when it comes to, oh, I don't have time to cook healthy. Um, I, I've stopped that and, you know, this is the year of me. So if, if I can give anything, it's just take that step. Absolutely. It's going to be a good year, Gina, better year. Definitely. 
So do what you love and stop making excuses. That's great advice. Last question, super easy. Where can people find out more about you and your agency? Oh, and that's super easy. Go to <laughs> furiarubel.com, F-U-R-I-A-R-U-B-E-L.com. Find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm at Gina Rubel on just about every platform out there. Um, so, and I love to connect with new, bright, wonderful people just willing to make a difference in the world. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your journey, how you view creativity and all the great work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you for having me, Deirdre. You're welcome. And thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Keep the conversations going and the feedback coming. And if you want to sign up for updates, just go to our website, womenworldwideshow.com. And until our next episode, be safe, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.